Hello and welcome back to Vampire. We've got to go rescue the lovely Dr. Swansea, but before we do that, we really should rest, see the consequences of our actions, and, you know, spend some XP. That kind of thing. Now, I did say I was going to level up my claws, because I do like my claws. It's a lot of XP, but, you know, claws. Mmm. And I think the next thing we should probably do is... Endurance, can I get the next level? Yeah, just about. Burly, burly level. There we go. So we've got another lever in claws and a bit more endurance, which I think will be handy. Plus, I like the claws. It's kind of cool. And so, the death of Aloysius Dawson. A highly respected resident of the city district passed away last night. Aloysius Dawson, co-founder and head of the Dawson & Dawson Company at 71 years of age. It was no secret that Mr. Dawson's health had recently declined. The once joyful businessman had almost totally disappeared from social events since the tragic death of his twin brother. An influential man, Aloysius Dawson was also a great art collector and a concerned philanthropist. Recently, he had been campaigned for the audacious plan to save London from the Spanish flu by raising a quarantine wall to separate the districts and contain the epidemic. But only a few hours before his death, the magnate had given orders to cancel the construction of the wall. More surprisingly, large donations of money have been received by all major London hospitals, while equally important contributions have been made to the smaller clinics and dispensaries. Does it mean... Aloysius Dawson, a man known for his fortitude and conservative opinions, was finally touched by grace. Who could say? Only one thing for certain. All over the city, thanks to the man's late generosity, stocks of medical supplies have been replenished and the death toll has significantly been lowered in the last 24 hours. No doubt hundreds of grateful citizens will be at the St. Mary's Churchyard to accompany the final journey of their benefactor. Isn't that nice? He saved people and, as such, the district doesn't really suffer because of it. And of course we did some doctor's rounds. How has this affected the district? Healthy. I don't remember everyone being this sick. I think this is the game showing you that people will not be sick anymore because that's it. He did a good job for people and as such, everyone is now better. Hooray! Isn't that nice? Boom, sanitized district. Cool. The only one that isn't is this district because we're missing somebody. And that one, obviously, because, you know, Aloysius is dead. But hey, not so bad after all. Good work, Aloysius. Right, now that Dr. Swansea's waited for us for like an entire day. Oh, I should probably refill all my ammo and whatnot. There we go. Let's go and rescue him from the Doris Fletcher. Sorry, just beating this thing to death. Gross. Anyway, where were we? Yes, that's it. The Doris Fletcher District thingy theatre. What's the best way to get there? Probably through the West End. Yeah, we'll go, we'll go that way around. Screech, screech, screech. Nothing to do with me, sir. You have your moment. I'm not that fussed. It's okay. Right. Anyway. And so we are upon the West End yet again. Now everyone's healthy, though. Yay! Except for Aloysius, because he's dead. Yay! Right then. Where are we going to go? This way. Yes. The quarantine area should just be just ahead. I do kind of love that they're like, oh, well, our everyday lives haven't been affected by this. I mean, this big fat off fucking wall here. But I digress. The theatre should be down this way, shouldn't it? Excuse me, sir. Have you seen any vampires in the area? You know, except for me. I don't count. You people have been naughty. Hey. Well, that was awkward. You people have been naughty and taken my friend. I'm going to have to beat you all now. No, no, we discussed this. Oh, look, you know what? I give up. I'm just going to kill you. Ow. You know, people don't learn, do they? They call me rude. Actually, now I think about it, they call me rude names because everyone I correct, I then eat. Maybe I need to let people live. That sounds kind of silly. Boop. 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 Beep. Boop. Steady boys, this one's mu- Hey, I didn't even munch it, my mouth didn't even move. That was a scam. Excuse me, sir. Oh Christ, I threw a farty grenade and it did nothing. Crivens! Well, Crivens this, sir. With my claws and my big boinky stick. Because that's what we're all here for. Actually, I'm actually all here for the story at this point since the combat hasn't really changed in the last 20 odd hours, has it? The theatre, yet again. Now, we're actually here for a side quest, too. So Prewin never left Doris's theatre after they invaded. They must be holding Edgar here in their new headquarters. 
Yes, I would imagine so. Now, we actually do have a quest here, though. Let me bring up my magical quest button. Whoops. Da -da -da, Pandora's box, which is also in the theatre. Hooray! Right, let's have a good nosy around the... Alright, sir. Oh, that went right through him. What a scare. I've got a big blood shield here. I'm going to stick... Oh. Ow. Sir. Sir, I, I most disagree with your actions. Allow me to show you how much I disagree by eating you. And then calling you. Oh, he's not dead. Oh, that's awkward. Alright, don't worry. I got this. Oh! Oh, dear. Okay. Right, first of all... First of all, right, let's sort that. Next thing, to give you the shadow. The shadow. There we go. Now I'm going to whack you. And I'm going to eat you to death. Get some of my HP back that you so callously stole from me. Look, I've already stopped your boss. Can we not just, you know, bygones be bygones and all that? No? Righto. Beating it is then. Bastards. Well, I cannot enter. One locked door. That's a somewhat of a nuisance. So I can't go down. I beg your pardon. Oh, it's Edgar. He's healthy. He's fine. Oh, hello. Excuse me. Sorry. I'm sorry to sort of barge in here unannounced and eat you, but uh, you took my friend, so I'm going to have to beat you all. It's nothing personal. Well, I mean, it's completely personal. You stole my friend, but it's fine. Look, I'll get over it. The point being is I do have to give you an old-fashioned stabbing, and there's nothing up here. Kind of hoping there'd be some goodies or excitement in my life or something, but there is neither goodies nor excitement up here. Just, just swooshing. Boop. You know, I've managed to approximately travel about two feet. The Lord's work? I don't think you do, because the Lord would probably not want you to attack innocent people. Although I'm not innocent, so I don't know if that really counts. Point being... Ow. Point being, is that I'd rather them not attack me, and I see myself as innocent. Ow. At the very least, Edgar's innocent. So, that's naughty. That does put you on my naughty list, and those people on my naughty list get spanked. And by spanked, I mean hit with a big stick. Oh, yes. Well, this is going swimmingly. Is there a way down? Okay, think I sussed it. There is something I've missed. That's what it was. Don't worry, I'll use the power of editing. No one will even know how long that took me. Okay. Right in front of me is a note. McCullum's report. Oh, boy. I just finished reading Doris Fletcher's journal, as painful and dreadful as it was. My god, the woman planned to see everyone in murder afflicted by infecting all those who would come to see her next play. It helped me understand greatly what is going on. Doris Fletcher's, Dor Doris, Fletcher. Doris Fletcher's real name was Doris Jones. She was the daughter of some Harriet Jones who had been treated as a patient for a long time at the Pembroke Hospital. She clearly hated her mother, but used her fame and notoriety to see her while visiting the poor and sick in the East End. I don't know exactly what happened then, but this is how her mother infected her before t returning to the theatre, and how she turned into that monstrosity that the leech known as Jonathan Reed finally defeated. The presence of that vampire in the same hostel where Harriet Jones was treated can't be a coincidence. I'm convinced he is deeply involved with the vampire play going on in London right now. I'm also convinced Swansea is his accomplice, and that those two are planning something more terrifying than anything the guard has ever faced. Maybe I should take some time to read the old books and manuscript the guard still possesses for some answers. It may provide useful. In the meantime, I better send some patrols to investigate what's occurring at the Pembroke. Uh, how many was that? Two days later. I don't like how the date is in American when we're, this is based in London. That's a that's a silly mistake to trip up on. We don't do dates like eleven oh six eighteen. We do it oh eight eleven eighteen. Whatever. Anyway, it took me two days to pass through the dusty registers and books we kept in the vault. God, I hate losing time like this. The search did prove fruitful for once. I found two pages that could be related to our present situation in William Marshall's memoirs. I took them with me to read more carefully. This creature Marshall says he fought in 1666. This disaster that aimed to destroy London is very similar to what happened with Doris Fletcher. Disease, infection, 
hatred of the living, a desire to see the city ransacked. I have no doubt that the bloody old leech of William Marsh is behind this, and that he is back. This could be our greatest accomplishment. If the, if the guard could get rid at, at, at last... Ugh, if the guard could at last find and destroy that old bastard. I believe what Marshall did in 1666 is exactly what Reed is now trying to do. Did the creature, this disaster, escape their will? Is that why Marshall destroyed him in, in 1666? And Reed did the same with Doris Fletcher before becoming such a creature? I don't know. Those two are clearly working together and Swansea is helping them. I'll immediately give orders to have him arrested and interrogated. As for Reed, I'll destroy the evil beast myself and then we'll deal with William Marshall and this disaster thing. Prywin will prevail once Doris more. Doris Fletcher was about to become a disaster. I'm getting close to having all the evidence. Yeah, getting there, that's for sure. Right, at least now we can go to the basement. I am good at video games. Yay! No, seriously, though, I found the key. Hooray! Right, then. Let's... Well, the door we want to go into it's is... locked, all right. Of course it is. Is that a notepad, or is that just random things? Like, I kind of wish the game would highlight notes a bit easier. Like, I kind of missed it that time. I mean, admittedly, I was doing a lot of fine scooting. No but... civilians allowed, sir. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Are you stupid? Uh, no, I'm not stupid. I'm just a vampire. I mean, sometimes the two and two go together, but, you know, that's besides the point. Ah, he's dead. Nice. What is in here, I wonder? A safe. It's locked, all right. The Vampire Knight. Why can't I look at the details of that? All right, I'm gonna have to try and find the Vampire Knight note. That's unhelpful. William, this is about William Marshall. If you want to have a quick look, please do. It's somewhat relevant, and I suggest having a quick pause to read it. I won't just do to time, since I, you know, waste enough of your time to do. William Marshall's memoirs. Uh, now this one is a bit more relevant. The Brotherhood of Saint Paul Stoll finally agreed to meet with me in London. They proposed to meet inside the new cathedral of St. Paul. I like the wit and solemnity of these men. What a symbol to choose the place where I defeated this disaster, but also the place where I fell. I agreed to their proposition. There, in sacred silence of the church and under the eye of God, they respectfully listened to me. They acknowledged my victory against this evil creature, the Dust Astro, the Eater of Stars, who wished to spread death and pestilence all around her. Since they acknowledged my will to save London in 1666, they heard my request, my burning desire to stop the blood of hate. Their primate promised to come back with me to an answer. The primate of St. Paul wrote back with me just a name, the Tear of Angels. According to him, the ancient artifact could heal anything, cleanse any blackened soul and purify my blood. Blessed by the Lord, it took me more than a hundred years to find a cure for the blood of hate, but I may have finally found it. Soon the raid shall end, soon I may repair the wrong I did and cleanse my failures. Now all I need to do is retrieve the necessary equipment to create the artifact. Blood of the purest heart mixed with the blood of the king. To find such rare ingredients is not what worries me most, for time is on my side. It's the last part that worries me. Pure essence of garlic. I'm afraid it will literally hurt like hell when I drink the antidote. But if that's the price to pay to cleanse my soul and correct my mistakes, I'm ready to endure this blood excruciating of a pure pain. Heart. Garlic, the blood of a king. I don't understand. Perhaps this is what McCullum drank. I had better keep that in mind. It's locked, all right. I believe there is a key to that lockbox. Uh, however, I don't think I can go through the next door without saying that all, uh, all that up. So I'm going to go look for that key, so do give me a sec. Aha, right, I was looking for this, uh, so w I didn't go very far, don't worry. Pinned note, evidence safe. Until further notice, this safe will be used to store sensitive evidences. It must always be locked. If you need access to it, you can find me on the last floor to get the key. Bloody remember to bring it back to me when you're done. Rodney. I should find the key to that box. I should find the key to that box. Let us find Rodney. And then with this Rodney, we can, you know, get the thing we need. And then not read it. Remember, that's the key. If we read it, the quest breaks. Well, it doesn't break. We just get in trouble. So let us scootly, scootly, scoot all the way back up. He said he's on the top floor. Oh. Uh, is this Rodney? Rodney, Rodney, Rodney. Let me beat this man half to death first. Ow. Watch out! He's eating me, just like all the other vampire things. Anyway. Is, it, is this you, Rodney? Rodney looks like the kind of guy who wears a hat like this. I think this is Rodney. 
<laughs> Ow. I now have the key to open this box. That was tricky. Also, this is not the top floor, is it? I'm pretty sure there's a floor above us. Because we fell down onto this floor. Ah, uh, details. Point being is we can get the thing we need. And then we can carry on. Yay! Scoot, 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 scoot. Uh, there we go. Right, let's open this safe. Trust me, this is relevant, I promise. I really don't know if I should read this. Uh, I shouldn't. Seriously, I shouldn't. Let's wait until... I'm not going to do anything until that's gone off my screen. There we go, so I can't accidentally read it. Hey, Edgar. Edgar. Edgar, can you hear me? Jonathan, is it really you? Easy. Easy. Save your strength. I'm getting you out of here. Oh, I thought we were getting you out of here. Now I'm just going to plonk you on this chair. It's basically the same thing, except one involves Don't leaving. Try to spare me. As a physician, I know all too well when it's too late. Oh no, he's dying by plot. A punctured lung, broken ribs, internal bleeding. An accurate diagnosis, wouldn't you say? Edgar, what happened? They wanted me to confess. Beat me black and blue. Jeffrey McCullum ambushed me at the Pembroke Hospital. He was convinced you and I were responsible for the Skull epidemic. I never imagined that self-righteous fanatic would... dare to attack us in the open. What b became of him? To prove him wrong, I let him go. Really? you sure that was the wisest course of action? Time will tell. The most intriguing part of his accusation was that you and I were the pawns of some ancient vampire. William Marshall. Yes, they... Uh, they tortured me to make me confess the same nonsense. Well... We do believe him, right? I really... Are you hiding something from me, Edgar? I think you're hiding something, Edgar. What do you mean? William Marshall, for example. You speak of him as if you know him. How is that? Jonathan, I, I cannot say I'm ready for another round of questions. Well, it's kind of important. Why would the guard of Prewen believe you and I created the vampire epidemic? Maybe due to our profession? Because I offered you shelter in my hospital. What can you tell me about William Marshall? Not much. History paints the story he was the greatest knight who ever lived. Amongst the immortals, he had a yet greater legend. Why is the guard of Prewen so obsessed with him? He was the only ancient vampire to escape the first great hunt launched by the guard of Prewen in 1854. They believe he's an evil creature plotting his return. Why would he deserve such a reputation? I cannot say. The Brotherhood of St. Paul Stoll has next to no intelligence on him. All I know is that he's supposed to be the oldest of all the British vampires. Next to no intelligence on him, there was an entire note about him in the journal from William Marshall. Mm. While investigating the epidemic, I read some of McCullum's findings. I think you have some explaining to do. I have nothing to hide, Jonathan. Nothing at all. Do you remember when we suspected Sean Hampton of killing Harriet Jones? Yes. Uh. Terrible episode that came as a shock to us all. Harriet Jones faked her own death. When I found her in the sewers, she confessed she wanted everybody to pay for what happened to her. That woman was extremely bitter, full of hatred and festering anger. 
Do you remember? Oops. Ha Sorry. Do you know Doris Fletcher's real name? No, I'm afraid not. Her real name was Doris Jones. She was the daughter of Harriet Jones. What do you want me to say, Jonathan? Yeah, I think we know where this is going, and this is a bit unfortunate. Doris Fletcher got infected in Pembroke from Harriet Jones, but how did Harriet Jones get infected when she was hospitalized exactly? Doris Fletcher visited her mother at the Pembroke Hospital. That's how she first got infected. I know nothing about that. Miss Fletcher once came to visit the sick. That is all I know. No, Edgar, there is more. Doris Fletcher was Harriet Jones's daughter. They exhibited the same symptoms. Blind hate and strong physical mutation. What does this sad story have to do with us? Well, I was about to say, don't you see the pattern? Come on, Edgar. Don't you see the pattern here? The epidemic? The link between Doris and Harriet? The suspicion of McCullum? How could I? I never saw Harriet Jones again after she fled the hospital. Do you know where we are? Doris Fletcher's theater. This is where that hateful creature plotted to spread the epidemic across London. I only briefly met Miss Fletcher once when she visited the Pembroke Hospital. You say it was to see her mother, she seemed like such a sweet and graceful woman. My point exactly. The disease turned her into a bitter soul, driven by vengeance just like her mother, a symptom of all the infected patients. Certain diseases are known to produce similar effects. Rabies, for example. And rabies is not the devil at work. Doris and Harriet shared more than a hidden family bond. They were the embodiment of the epidemic and are linked to the Pembroke Hospital. Come on, Edgar, this is no coincidence. I swear I'm at a complete loss. All I did was administer vampire blood to cure old Harriet. There was no evil plan, no diabolical plot. You did what? You did what? I know! I tested the regenerating and healing properties of vampire blood on Harriet Jones. My only intention was to find the cure for influenza, I swear. Whose blood did you use? William Marshall's? Mine? Lady Ashbury's. While transfusing her with human blood, humanely appeasing her hunger, I also kept samples of her blood for my you research. You used her blood on Harriet Jones? My God, Edgar, that's unethical. You betrayed two of your patients at the same time. I made a mistake. What is science if not trial and error? We both know it, Jonathan, we both know it. What a poor justification for your morbid fascination and thirst for glory. You have worked beside me. You saw what I'm doing at Pembroke Hospital. Jonathan, you know I'm not an evil soul. Just another victim of this tragedy. So we have the option here to turn him into a vampire, should we want to. Embrace him, which of course we're not going to do, because, you know, we're not doing that on this run. Or let him die. Now, honestly, my thoughts here? This man is an unethical doctor, and what would an unethical doctor do with the unlimited time in the world to experiment on his patients? Edgar. Sorry. Yes, Edgar, you're about to die. I won't say it's fair, but I can't say you don't deserve it. Your words hurt deeply, Jonathan, but they come from a friend. I... I helped you, remember? Yes, I remember. The second I saw you in that bar, I knew we would accomplish great things, you and I. I thought you were a vampire, until you brandished that cross. looked so lost when you opened that door. For a few seconds, I thought you were there to kill me. I think we were both afraid. And now, I feel true fear. Is there an afterlife? What 
will become of me when I'm dead, Dr. Reed? I really cannot say, Dr. Swansea. Uh, uh, in the end, life betrays us all. 